Hey everyone, it's Pastor Wes, and welcome to the top of another week with Real with Wes. I first want to encourage you guys to keep your head up. We're still praying for you wherever you may be in the world or wherever you may be seeing this in the tri-state area and whatever may be going on, man, God's love for you is still continuing. God's goodness is. And Nicole and I and our pastors, Creflo and Taffy, our entire New York family are continuing to pray for you and we wish you safety, health, and wellness. I also want to invite you uh, in the comments section of our YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Hey, let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you're thinking. Uh, if you got some suggestions, Maybe, hey, I want to hear this from you, or you got some questions you'd like me to eventually address. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want feedback. Uh, what you think is very important to us because you matter to us. So to get into this whole week, which I'm really excited about, is we're going to be talking about all week. Uh, healthy expectations is what we're going to talk about. Um, expectations is an important thing. Um, no matter what's going on in life, no matter what season, to have good expectations and realistic expectations is very important. So let me first set this scripture up and then we're going to kind of work our way through it for a moment. It's in Psalms 37 and I'm going to start in verse 4 and then read into verse 5. It says, take delight in the Lord or take pleasure in him and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord Trust him and he will help you. Now, the one thing about expectations, what's associated is it comes from a place of what you desire. Whatever it is you're desiring for something, you're going to place an expectation. This is what I see coming out of this. If your desire is to get married in life, if you're a single person, you're going to expect certain things from that. You should have certain expectations of who you want to marry. And um, going through that, there has to be balance to those things. What I want to talk about first today to kind of set up the whole week is where do we, where should we get our expectations from? Our expectations from have to come from God ultimately. They have to come from the Word. Now, where you're getting your expectations will set the tone of how you handle things. Uh, if you're getting your expectations from you know, Hollywood or something like that. You're going to have a misplaced expectation in life. If you're getting your expectations solely from news and media outlets or social medias, you're going to create misplaced expectations and can even lead you to a place of what may be fantasy that's unrealistic. Uh, and what that happens is when you get to certain places in life, you get to certain relationships, you get to certain job expectations there, and you find out what was you were expecting wasn't really what you thought it, there's a lot of disappointment is what it is. And when you feel that disappointment is, um, it can bring about a lot of uh, depression is what it can do. It can bring a lot of hurt is what it can do. And you miss out on a lot of the rich things in life. And that's why it's important to take our delight in God and pull our expectations from Him. And to commit what we decide to do and our expectations that we decide to have to Him and trust Him with that. And what happens is He starts showing you what you should prioritize in life. He starts showing you what's important in life is what he does. Your expectations is going to heavily weigh on what you value the most in life. And if you value, let's say, money above relationships, those things can get a little out of order is what happens. Uh, some expe expectations necessarily aren't bad. Some expectations aren't necessarily, you know, evil expectation. But if we get them out of the wrong order, it can be unfulfilling in life. Uh, if you expect, you know, like when you go into marriage, you have the fantasy of this is what's going to happen. And it's always going to be bliss and it's always going to be perfect. And we're always going to have the starry love look in our eyes. And if we don't, that means our marriage is bad. What happens is you get married and you realize you're dealing with another human. You're dealing with yourself is what you're doing. And your insecurities can come out. Your fears can come out. Your, your frustrations can come out. And all of a sudden you think you have a horrible marriage now because those expectations weren't met. But the truth is, is you're getting a reality check of what real marriage is. And when you have the right expectations going or you adjust your expectations, all of a sudden you can see the beautiful things that God has placed there. Uh, if you put over ex expectations on your kids, well, I, I expected my child to always be a straight A student, no exception, get into all advanced classes, and then your child may not be good at math just because they weren't wired that way. They were maybe more creative or something. And that expectation as a parent is let down and you end up getting harder on your child. 
you project hard expectations and it can become a very rough environment and actually hinder the relationship between you and your child. And you have to ask, where did I pull that expectation from? Where did I get that from is what it is. And you'll identify, well, maybe I got it from my upbringing. Maybe I got it from my parents or my grandparents. Maybe I got it from something I saw or an article I read. And you really got to filter and judge everything. And ultimately that judgment is the word of God and God himself. And that's why the scripture talks about right here in Psalms 37, man, commit your way to God, commit your expectation to God, commit your desire to God, bring it before him and say, judge this God. Is this right? Really? Is this something that I want? And it's okay to have wants and desires because God puts them in your heart is what it is. He says he'll give you the desires of your heart, but you got to judge it and say, okay, is this God putting this? Is this me? Did this come from somewhere else? And can I exchange what I need to exchange for as making it the right one? Because when you have the right desires that God places in your heart, when you allow God to shape and mold your desires, man, God's in that. God's behind that. There's grace in that is what that is. There's good ideas and then there's God ideas. And there's good desires, but then there's the God put desires. God knows how to put desires that were uniquely built for you your plan and your life. And when you set your expectations there, you're a, lot, you're a lot less likely to end up crashing and burning and disappointment. Why? Because faith takes what grace makes available. And that's important for our expectations of what that is. And there's grace to back those expectations. So whatever you're feeling today, if you're feeling disappointment, if you're feeling discouragement, check your expectations. If you're disappointed in your spouse, reevaluate your expectations. Say, are they balanced? Say, are they right? And allow God to reorder them. If you're disappointed in your job or maybe like, oh, I don't feel like I have enough money, reevaluate your expectations in life. It's not that we should set our expectations low. No, they, do, they should be high, very high, but they need to be set by God. They need to be prioritized with God. And when it's that way, you live in harmony, you live in a much more place of peace, and you come to a place of contentment is what you do, and you can be satisfied in what God has brought in your life, and you actually, ultimately what it does, you enjoy life. And that's what I encourage you to do today. Go before God, lay down all your desires, write them down and say, God, where did I get this from? Is this you? Does this need to adjust? Let me conform to your plan. And I promise when you do, there will be more enrichment and enjoyment in life because one, you'll start seeing all the good things you have in your life. You'll start expecting the right things in your life and you'll start seeing your expectations fulfilled because God fulfills the expectations that he gives you. Love you guys. I encourage you to join me all week as we break this down and I'll see you tomorrow.